What up, folks? Once again, it's your boy, Chicago, the handsome liberal. This video is titled a more somber subject. You hear this all the time, particularly in right-wing circles, black-on-black -black crime. The question is, why is it that black people only seem to care when a black cop kills them or a white person kills a black person? You guys don't seem to care about all the killing in Chicago or in Philadelphia or Memphis or Louisiana. On and on, you name any urban city that has a high African-American population, and there are plenty of black killing other black people. So why don't you guys ever complain about that as opposed to when a white person kills you or when a cop kills you? That is a legitimate complaint. I'm going to tell you as a liberal, like I said, I can see both sides of the argument. That is a very legitimate complaint, legitimate question. And here, we're going to talk about it today, and I'm going to answer that. But before I do, what do I always ask you to do? Go ahead and get a brother a subscription. Hit that subscribe button. Feel free to click like if you like what I'm saying. And if you don't, go ahead and hit the dislike button and drop a comment and let me know why. And we can talk about it there. Why don't we seem to give a shit when a black person is killed? Well, first off, I can give you a few reasons. And these are my opinions. And I would love, like I said in the comments, to hear where you think I got it wrong or where you think I got it right. First thing is, when a black person kills another black person, if they're caught, their ass is going to prison, oftentimes for life, certainly for quite a while. There are no black people going around killing black people being told it's justified or we understand or, well, he was a bad guy. So that's the first thing, is that oftentimes when black people are speaking strongly against being killed by a cop or being killed by a white person, it's not necessarily the killing. It's that they don't expect to get justice. We can argue whether that's true or not. We can argue whether it's self-defense or we can come up with a million different reasons to talk about this topic. But that's generally the issue is that the black community is not expecting to get justice when one of, you know, when a black, when a black person is slain or killed by a white person. That's Hence the phrase, no justice, no peace. They're saying if you don't give us justice, you're not going to get peace. We're going to keep complaining. We're going to do shit you don't like, up to and including rioting and looting. I'm not defending any of this. So don't come in the comments telling me I'm defending this shit. I'm just trying to explain it to you. So that's number one, is that they treat differently when a white person kills a black person versus the black on black crime is because of oftentimes the lack of justice. Um... There are other issues to take in consideration in addition to the lack of justice. And that is right now the sentiment towards police is certainly not very popular. And when it comes to black people complaining that police are mistreating black people, that goes back. I'm in my late 40s and I can guarantee it goes back well before I was, you know, I was brought on this earth. Blacks have always been complaining that the cops have been mistreating them. And for the most part, those complaints have always been falling on deaf ears. I'll tell you right off the bat, think of any show that featured a black cast. And I mean from the Jeffersons on up to whatever shows are out now, Blackish and whatever, whatever you want to think about this on TV now in 2021. Family Matters throughout the 90s. Any show you can think of that featured a black cast most likely had at least one episode devoted to being somebody in that cast being mistreated by police. That's how extenuating the complaints or how extensive the complaints are from black people that the police are mistreating them. It's something they have always been complaining about. Good Times and San Francisco and all of these shows, like I said, even Family Matters where Mr. Winslow was a cop. The dad on the show was a police officer. And even that show has an episode devoted to police mistreating a black person. So it's, whether we want to say it's true or not, some people believe that the cops are not targeting black folks at all. It's just black criminals complaining because they have to face justice. Whatever, we can, we can go back and forth about that. I'm just simply saying that when it comes to African Americans complaining about police misconduct, the complaints are old as dirt. They have always been there with us. So why are things going the way they're going now? And it's 
simple. African-Americans are getting a listening ear. So they're piling on. They're finally like, well, people are finally listening to us. Finally, somebody actually believes that the cops are mistreating us. They've never believed this. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't lead to good cops, justifiable cops being placed in the wrong category. There are a lot of justifiable police shootings, self-defense actions that get immediate scrutiny because the public has this negative viewpoint of police. You, you can't really operate in public nowadays as a cop without somebody pulling out a camera. We can go back and forth once again on, did they earn that? Or is that just the public viewing them from an unfair, unfair perspective? You know me, I'm coming, coming to you from a liberal standpoint. And my take on this is the blue wall of silence protecting bad cops, the Fraternal Order of Police, the police union, they have not helped out the police reputation with the public. They have helped out the police. Their job is to defend the cops, not to necessarily tell the truth or get the truth out or straighten things out. Their job is to, is to defend the cop that's being accused. And that's what they've done. And that's what the Blue Wall of Silence is about. You just keep your mouth shut. Very similar to how things are in the hood where, you know, thug or gangbanger do some shit on the block and everybody keeps silent when the cops come around asking for tips and asking for identification and things like that. Everybody gets silent. Well, the cops are the exact same way. If you watch your partner commit a crime or something like that in IAB, internal affairs, or somebody come up to you out in public in front of other cops and ask you, well, did you see this or who did? You can't talk either. You, as a, as a fellow police officer, you can't talk without fear of retaliation the exact same way they do in the hood. In the hood, if you want to tell on somebody or you want to you know, speak out against something you saw, you kind of have to do it anonymously. That's the exact same procedure that things have to go down within the police department. You can't tell on somebody where all the other cops know. I mean, it's so, so that's the other reason. Like I said, the first one is lack of justice second reason <laughs> and i mean i i hate to say it but yeah the second reason is we just we just don't like the way um we've been viewed when, when filing complaints now i know if you're on the right you believe that it's just cryptic all of this sounds like bullshit to you feel free to hit the dislike button but tell me why tell me why we can talk about it like i said in the comments but if you do agree with this Chances are you're probably liberal. You might even be black. I'm I'm happy to get that like. But like I said, for the most part, we don't feel like we're going to get justice. And now that the sentiment is actually in favor of holding bad police accountable, we're piling on. Sometimes wrong, but for the most part, we are piling on. That's why black on black crime is not getting anywhere to get anywhere near the attention that black on white crime or white on black crime is getting. I'm not saying any of this is right. I'm just explaining it to you. If you got a bunch of people killing folks and they're not going to jail versus, like I said, there are loads of black people serving time in prison for committing violent felonies against other black people. The only thing that stops you from going to prison if you kill another black person for the most part is they haven't found you yet. But you, you're just not getting a whole lot of black people going around killing other black people and it's being found justifiable or in self-defense. They're going to fucking prison. So there's nothing to complain about. Now, in regards to black on black crime in the hood, there's marches. There's tougher laws. I mean, look at the gun laws in Chicago, whether you agree with them or not. That is an action taken to stave off black on black crime. Now, you may think that is the exact opposite of what they should do. A lot of right wingers believe the solution is more guns, not less. But fact of the matter is, those laws are being passed to address black on black crime. So the idea that they're doing nothing about it is not true. Like I said, they're Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, whether you, regardless of how you feel about them, they have been in several communities speaking out about black on black crime over since the, at least the 1980s that I'm aware of. They've been to Chicago, they've been to LA, they've been to funerals and they've done eulogies. 
they're always speaking out against black on black crime. Jesse Jackson has been to prisons telling them there's a video of circulating out there of him saying that the I'm going to tell you how not to come out here and how you can get out. Don't commit crimes. The prison population didn't like it, but that was coming out of the mouth of Jesse Jackson. So it's not that black on black crime fails to get attention or or any type of serious um any kind of serious outburst. It's just that I'm going to use the same phrase that you often hear coming from the right. The media doesn't cover it. If a bunch of black people are marching in the in the hood in protest of some seven-year-old girl that was accidentally shot or something, it's not going to appear on Fox News or even CNN to some degree. It may appear on the local news in that town that they're out protesting the wrongful death of a seven-year-old or whatever, but that's not something that's going to appear on the major news networks. You know what will appear on the major news networks? The killing of that seven-year-old girl. That'll appear on the major news networks, but how did the public, the, the local neighborhood, how they respond to that? That's not going to be on the news network. They may show if the guy is caught, yeah, but the outrage from that neighborhood in regards to that child being killed is not going to be on the national news networks. It never is. And there are tons of um, marches and protests in those areas, stop the violence type movements that have been held at least in the last two to three decades that I can remember. So that's part of the main reason why it appears that we are more concerned with white on black crime as opposed to black on black crime. It's because you hear us complaining about white on black crime. And when it comes to black on black crime, you don't. You only hear the glorification of it, particularly in hip hop music, which is nasty at glorifying black on black crime. As I can't defend that at all. Even as a liberal being able to see both sides, there is no defense for glorifying black on black crime in hip hop. I understand some of it is allegedly art telling about what's happening in the neighborhood, but some of that is bullshit. Some of those are actually real people bragging about the crimes they committed. There are plenty of people who have been arrested and convicted of violent felonies based on their fucking album. So you can only drag the, it's only, you can only say it's art for so long when they can prove that you're bragging about somebody who was killed on 31st street and they can show you on 31st street when somebody was actually killed. That shit ain't art. That's testimony. <laughs> That's the way it's been treated. So I don't know. I don't know anything to say other than other about that. Other than that is just dumb as fuck. But that's my take on it is that, yeah, we, we don't, we don't condone black on black crime either. We, I mean, like I said, I'm in my late forties. There's no way I want to live in a neighborhood where people were killing each other right and left. Now I did grow up on the South side of Chicago, spent my summers in the projects, Robert Tellers for anybody who knows what Chicago, North side of Milwaukee. I've been, I've had plenty of years in some of the most violent communities in America. I mean, I've been through Inglewood, some, and I'm talking, when I say violent, I mean national, com, nationally known violent communities. I've been in Cabrini Green. I'm talking about neighborhoods in Chicago where you don't have to be from Chicago to have heard about the violence there. I mean, if you are you don't have to be from California to know what goes on in Watts or what went on in the Bronx or some shit like that in New York. It's nationally known to be violent. And that's what Robert Taylor's or Cabrini Green in Chicago or the Inglewood neighborhood in Chicago is nationally known to be violent. I grew up in those fucking neighborhoods. So I know what it's like, but I'm just going to simply say we do speak out against black on black violence. It's just not covered very well in the media. That's kind of all I can say. So what do you think? Do you think I'm hitting the point here? You think I'm just talking yin yang? I would love to hear your response in the comments. Like I said, once again, hit the subscribe for a brother so you know when I'm dropping these videos. Feel free to hit the like button if you like what I had to say. And if you dislike it, hit the dislike. But leave me a fucking comment and let me know why. It's your boy Chicago, the handsome liberal. Catch you later.